All right, well, I finally got the uh, Slayer 007 1.5 volt 1 AA battery CFL circuit done today and working. And it all revolved around this 2 inch ferrite, ferrite toroid coil. Um, and I wrapped it today. And there's the toroid. And this is the heart of why this works, I've decided. If you don't do that, it's not going to work, not on a volt and a half. Uh, that's the heart of it right there. Uh, his circuit I followed uh, to the letter pretty much. I changed this little resistor, or this transistor, this was another 2N3055 to what he has done now, which is a 2N222. It triggers the bigger transistor. And uh, then on the back EMF, he has it coming off of this one. And it does work, and it does punch out real good. But I also found out that if you come off the little one with the LEDs and just use the low voltage like it's showing right here, you can light up these LEDs and then charge another battery, just like I've been doing on these other um, um, Jewel Thief circuits. But anyway, everybody's been watching this wondering, you know, do I get it? Do I get it? Me, me, me. Which one? Which one? Who gets it? Who gets it? Well, I don't know. But um, anyway, I'm going to try to incorporate this with that and uh, make a, a CFL and an LED circuit combined. That's kind of what I was going for. But anyway, here's the whole setup here. And um, what it is is uh, on the left, the uh, yellow meter over there is the uh, amperage draw on the uh, AA battery, which is right in there. Uh, there's the toroid, the transistor circuit, and there's the little CFL right there. And then that's the other CFL that runs off a normal inverter that I built uh, some time ago. And this right here will show the voltage on the capacitor. I'm going to charge up a capacitor off that little circuit I showed you on the charging side. So let me turn this on right now. And what I've got here is I've got a AA battery. It actually runs better on two of them on 3 volts. But uh, just to prove that it does run on one AA, I'm going to do it this way. Let me turn this on. Okay, there goes the little LEDs right there. There's my amp draw. I'll show you what that looks like. You've drawn two amps right now, or, or 20 milliamps right now. I got the CFL going. I mean the uh, LEDs going. But the CFL, the little uh, fluorescent light's not on yet. And uh, I have this capacitor grounded out here. Let me unground it, and I'll show you the uh, voltage climb on this capacitor. I'm going to unground it here. Okay, there goes the voltage on a capacitor. That's a 50 volt cap, uh, 2200 um, microfarad, I believe is what that is. And that's the, the capacitor climbing up. And this will climb on up over the source battery voltage. And that's what uh, you want. If you're going to charge anything, it's got to be over by quite a bit the source voltage otherwise it won't uh, put anything into the charge battery so let me uh, turn this up a bit and you'll see the CFL pop on now we got a potentiometer right here and there it goes there it goes the CFL it's not very bright but you got to remember I'm running on one AA battery right there that's just one AA battery That's about uh, 60 milliamps. I can get this to stay on at about 50, 40, 50 milliamps. There's 40 milliamps. That's still on. Okay. There's my voltage on the cap now. You can see where it is. And like I say, that has to be quite a bit higher than your source battery. Otherwise, you're not going to charge it. So that's what I wanted to show was that. Now, I'm going to put in this other battery here. And bump the voltage up. So I want to show you something here. Okay, now I'm going to double the voltage to about two and a half. And put this back down to about 50 milliamps here. See, there's 50 milliamps on the 50 milliamps on the draw. Now my my uh, cap voltage is up to almost four volts. Now what I'm going to do here is turn this one on. 
This one draws 230 milliamps. I can dial it down to about 70, 80 milliamps, but these inverter circuits, they actually are not very efficient and they draw quite a bit of amperage, believe it or not. But there's the two lights side by side. I'll turn this one on, turn it off. I'm going to dial this one up a little bit here. But they're close to the same brightness. Let me turn this off and turn it on. And that's off. That's on. Anyway, this is what I wanted to show tonight was this, this Slayer um, this Slayer circuit is a major winner. It allows you to use a small, small uh, battery source or a super cap. And you can run an LED, you can charge with it, and you can light a CFL fluorescent, a small one. Now I can light up the great big stuff with this if I want to. I just got to increase the battery voltage. It'll even light up that great big tube here. I had it running on this thing a little earlier, but uh, for this demonstration, I didn't want to hook it up. You have to put more more battery to it to make it do that. But uh, the other thing I wanted to show was the super cap uh, lighting here. This is a super cap. It's a 2.5 volt 50 farad super cap. I'm going to put that on to the battery source here, and you'll see what the super cap does. There we go with the super cap. That's running on a super capacitor now. That's, uh, I'll put this back down to 50 here. 50 milliamps. There's, uh, crank this up a bit here. There's the um, capacitor charging up off the other capacitor. So what I've got is I've got a super cap here. That super cap here driving the LEDs, driving the CFL fluorescent, and uh, it's charging up another capacitor. So there's no batteries on this right now at all. This is all running on, on capacitors. And uh, I don't know if anyone's ever done a fluorescent with a capacitor, but there it is. I mean, there's a fluorescent circuit running on a capacitor, charging up another capacitor. So that's kind of neat. Anyway, I just want to show everybody what was going on here, and this uh, this layer circuit uh, is a winner. It works quite well. Um, this is critical. You can't use washers. You can't fudge on that. You've got to make that out of a ferrite core. You get them on eBay for about five bucks, and uh, that right there. It takes you probably two hours to wind that. That's uh, 20 wraps on the uh, primary and the trigger, and then 440 wraps in three layers on the secondary. Uh, he actually had more layers and a little bit more wire, which would make that even more efficient. But this is what I had uh, to work with today, and it worked quite well. So, anyway, that's that's the uh, that's the project that I worked on today. Very successful, and uh, I just got to figure out which one of these two guys here. That one, that one, or that one, which one of these three guys gets the circuit? And they're all going, me, 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 I want the circuit, I want the circuit. So we'll see which one I do. But I'll probably box this up in something like that. And uh, that will be a, a combination light. It will be something that runs on the LEDs or the CFL. Now I can turn off this, this fluorescent here. And uh, the le LEDs get brighter. But then you can turn it back on if you want the, see that comes on or off. Now you'll charge up more. If you take the fluorescent out of the circuit, you charge up a little bit more. So that's just something to consider. But what I probably do on this one, I'll probably run it with uh, these uh, two batteries on each side. I'll put one on that side and I'll put one over on the charge side here. And then uh, run a test run and just see how long it runs probably put this down to like 40, 50 milliamps. Like something like about like that. 
and then uh, just see how long this would run. I, I figured this would run uh, a number of days, even with that uh, fluorescent on, because uh, the other tests that I ran, I was running at about 20 milliamps, and they ran for uh, you know a week. So if I could get a couple of days out of that with that light on there, I'd be happy. So, okie doke, that's the latest. Slayer, thank you very much. G. Bluer, I sure appreciate the circuit and all the help of uh, putting it together. Thank you much.